the Nikki Clark Show, transforming lives one story at a time. If you would like to be a guest or become a part of our live studio audience or even to become a sponsor, just go to www.nikkiclarknetwork.com. All right, uh, welcome back uh, to the Nikki Clark Show. And I wanted to ask you something. What time is it? Hot, hot Topics. Topics. That's right, it's time for Hot Topics. Hot Topics are what are trending on social media, uh, what people are talking about when they get together at the water cooler, you know, at the office. And sitting beside me in the Hot Topics chair is none other than the juice man, Jonathan Shaw. Please welcome him. Good, happy New Year. Happy New Year. Awesome, awesome. So tell me, um, have you made any New Year's resolutions? To be healthy. Yeah. And probably just to smile more than I did in 2015. Okay, let's see that. Those pearly whites. There you go. I don't smile that much. I'm having to learn how to learn how to do it. Okay, I'm going to keep prompting you. All right. Yeah, you're good at it. I like your smile. You know, and one of the things that uh, people try to do every year is to stick to their resolution to lose weight. Some of us, right? Um, so... Did you know that Oprah bought 10% of Weight Watchers? So now that you know, you can also join her Weight Watchers club as well as her book club. Did you know about that? Yeah, I heard about that. I saw the uh, the ads on TV. Yeah. So we'll see how that goes. Are Are you gonna like hit the gym more, or do you have a resolution to do that, or? I'm gonna try to get back into the gym more. I've been working on more at home and just uh, more um, what I'm eating. Mm -hmm. Like trying to, you know, look at the plate and say, okay, well, 50% of my plate is supposed to be greens, 25% of my plate is supposed to be meat, and then 25% uh, of my plate is supposed to be like, you know, some, some, some form of carbs. Okay. So, um, I'm, I'm trying to stick to it. Like, usually I have a seafood diet. You know, if I see food, I eat it. But, you know, I'm trying to be more mindful of what it is and, and cut down on my um, consumption of Diet Coke. I love Diet Coke. I, I don't Diet know. Diet Coke is bad. It's bad for you. Bad. I know. I know. But I'm trying to wean myself off. I have to admit, it's my guilty pleasure. How many glasses of water do you drink a day? Uh, not enough. I'm not even gonna front. You're supposed to drink minimum eight to ten glasses of water a day. That's the minimum. Okay, requirement. I'm not drinking enough. Do you drink eight glasses of water a day? Yeah. Okay. Some people do. Some people don't. All right. So we should drink more. You should drink more. I drink about 15 glasses of water. Do you drink coffee? Because I don't drink coffee. Diet Coke is my coffee. It's my caffeine intake. I, I have one, but, but I, I started off at the beginning of uh, 2015 with an extra large coffee. Now I'm down to like a small coffee. And by probably the next couple of months, I'll be down to like no coffee at all. Okay, okay. And some people have switched from like no meat to the gone vegetarian. Do you see yourself doing that? Absolutely not. Absolutely, <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. No. I like meat. You I like meat? I like meat, you know? If I want to be kind to animals, don't eat their food. That's, that's the way I think. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. I was thinking about doing the vegan thing, but you know, it's like, I mean, I'm Jamaican. I like my stuff fried. I like the fried chicken, I like the oxtail, all that good stuff. It's going to be hard, but maybe I could do it. I like the goat. I you like, like the, the meat. Goat? I like the chicken. I like the seafood. Yeah, but especially the I, seafood. I don't, I don't know if I could just eat like Kalaloo like every day. <laughs> every day. It's not good. Kalaloo is like spinach. People, yeah. So, well. It's worth a try. Um, mm, some uh, troubling news. Bill Cosby, did you hear about Mr. Huxtable and the trouble that he's in? Uh, he was just a, he was arrested and released on a $1 million uh, bail last week. 30-year-old um, charges that came up from someone in Canada, a woman in Canada, Toronto, I believe. I heard about it, and wow. Um, <sighs> It's hard to look at Bill Cosby or Dr. William H. Cosby as anything more than, let's say, a hero for myself because he had Fat Albert, he had The Cosby Show. Right. He showed um, many different people of color that you could be more than just here. You, mm -hmm. could, you know, you could, again, he has a word, doctor behind his name. For sure. He's given millions of dollars for education and all that other sort of stuff. Yeah. But again, if he's guilty, he's guilty. Mm -hmm. If he's innocent, he's innocent. So for myself, I'm not going to say a word mm -hmm. until he's tried by his peers and he's either guilty or he's innocent. But again, rape is rape. And yeah. if he did it, 
you guilty. Yeah, do the crime. You got to pay the time. Right? Exactly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I, I agree with you. So just uh, backtracking a little bit on the story. Uh, so apparently there was a woman who um, allegedly um, had the sexual assault uh, by. Um, uh, Mr. Crosby about 30 years ago and I believe uh, hush money was given to her to to kind of keep her quiet and her her lawyers encouraged her to um, go public with it and to uh, to open up the case so what does she give back the money because she's talking you know I've been reading some stuff on on the background of a couple of the cases and they're saying that he drugged women but yeah. apparently what what has happened is None of the ladies so far have said that he drugged them. Like, it, it's coming out that, you know, um, he gave them some form of medication or whatever the case would be, but none of the ladies have actually said that he drugged them. Okay. You know, he, they said that, you know, he... he, he, he kind of slipped them something. He, he slipped them something or he inappropriately touched them. So, again, there's that gray area. And, again, I'm, I'm, I'm not a lawyer mm -hmm. and I'm not on the jury. So I would love to see what comes yeah, out of definitely. all the testimony. Because all we're hearing right now is just hearsay and, you know, little sound bites from this person, mm -hmm. little sound bites from this person. So, you know, the defense attorney and the... And the, um, the defense attorney, wasn't that Gloria Allred? She's, uh, she's a fierce one in the States. I think, I think she, she's the... Pros she's the prosecutor. Prosecutor. Okay. okay. Yeah. But the lady who he has defending him, I mean... You know, she's no slouch. She she puts it out there. She was on CNN, and she and everything that you know that the commentators will say, she cuts it down and she just breaks it down. And she says, no, that's not what happened. I'm here to represent my client, and she's on point. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens with that. So, um, I mean, I I really love the store, um, go there quite a bit, they've got great sales, but I was a little disheartened when I saw this on my news feed the other day. Um, I don't know if you heard about Old Navy and their anti-artist campaign. There's a shirt that's uh, going out and it says um, basically, when I grow up I want to be an artist is written and then there's a big slash across artist and then uh, another type of profession is written like astronaut or president. So there's a whole kerfuffle now because <laughs> That's quite offensive. It's like an anti-artist um, campaign, and uh, I don't think that's right. So some people are actually boycotting Old Navy from that. I've dealt with people saying that what I do is not a profession. However, whether it be drawing, whether it be singing, whether it be acting, they're all things that you do with creativity. Absolutely. I'm left-handed, so I think with the right side of my brain. Mm -hmm. and. Without the creative people in this world or artists in this world, how boring would this world be? Look, 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 what, look what we're behind right now. <laughs> Somebody actually painted this. Yeah. Somebody actually thought to themselves, well, you know what, hey, I want to construct a building. So here's how you do it. That, that's art. Someone started a talk show. <laughs> that takes a little creativity. Yeah, so make some noise for the artists. A little artist love for you. So let's we'll see what happens with that. I definitely uh, agree with you. And then um, sad news, Natalie Cole, uh, the daughter of um, uh, Nat, King Cole. Nat King Cole passed away at 65 years old. This is a shame. It's yeah. a shame. I mean, she sang with her father at the age of six, started singing with her father at the age of six, Grammy Award winner. Um, first real big hit single back in 1974, This Will Be, has a song called Our Love. But the funny that th one? Yeah, but the funny thing about it is the song that she did with her father, the, the remake of Unforgettable, her family did not want her to do that song. They, want, they wanted her to leave it alone. Like some people believe when it comes to art, as we were talking about before, mm -hmm. leave music alone. Mm -hmm. Like this is her father's song. Their father made this song popular. Leave it alone. And I mean, mind you, it's her biggest hit and that's the one that we all remember her for. But we also have to keep in mind that when she did release that song, the families and, and her friends were not too happy with the fact that she did a song with her father. But she did it posthumously. Uh, so exactly. The, the recording, the duet was done uh, after his passing. So Correct. I guess maybe they thought, okay, well, you know, leave well alone, but it's a it, huge monster hit. That's why on her album, she on her album that, that, that when she did do that song, the original does appear and the remake does appear. Okay. Okay. Um, maybe we could play a little Natalie Cole later. Later on the show, some of our Not a problem. Uh, so yesterday, Young and Dundas, uh, unfortunately, uh, I don't know, this is happening a lot. There was a stabbing at Young and Dundas right across from Eaton Center at 7.30 in the evening. 
That's prime time. A um, young man was uh, stabbed in the leg with a large knife, and uh, two of the assailants, um, they went off on foot. They're looking for two young men in their 20s. What's going on? What's going on in the city is a lot of what I would call sense of entitlement. You think? When you have children that grow up in a system where there's no um, punishment for their actions, where you take children and you put them, you know, child gets a failing grade, the parents go to school, they argue with the principal, and then they get popped, put them to the next grade. There's no after school activities. There's, there's nothing for these children. No logical to consequences. There's no consequences. Mm -hmm. Then they're gonna continue to do foolishness throughout their whole entire lifetime. There's, it's, it's this big cycle that doesn't just start like when you see somebody get shot. Mm -hmm. it's, it's when that child does something and you're like, oh no, it's okay, Johnny, don't worry about it and there's no consequences for the action. That, that child gets up later on mm -hmm. and does some foolishness later on. Or what's actually happening as well too is kids that were friends who used to play together are now bitter rivals in two different gangs as they get older and, and somebody needs to go into schools, like I do, I do some work within schools, yeah. talking to kids as well, and, and, and saying to the parents, like, you have to take some time out of your busy schedule and actually know what your children are doing. Be a parent. And, and, and have consequences for your actions. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Bring back, remember when we had, when we had fitness and we used to have the, um, the award of excellence and you used to have a pin and all these different things and whatever? Remember those exercises? But, they, but they, cut all, they cut all that stuff out because Little Johnny or little Susie gets upset because they don't, they, they're not as well, they're, they're not as athletic as another child is. Right. So then they get put aside, they get put ahead. And again, sense of entitlement. Kids don't go outside anymore. They, I mean, I showed my kids um, a picture of uh, a street lamp. They're like, oh, that's a street lamp. I'm like, you don't know what that means. Haven't had a clue. And that, that meant something quite significant exactly. in, in our time. Exactly. When you see the lights come out, that's when you come home. I used to tell them, I said, I went from Mississauga downtown, and I was able to like travel on, on the bus. And, and if, if I were to put my eight-year-old on a bus right now by herself, go from Brampton downtown Toronto, they'd lock me up. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I mean, it's different times, and I understand there's crazy people out there as well. But again, we, we have to kind of be parents to our children. Okay. Would you make? Would you agree with that? Make some noise. Do you agree with that? Right. Thank you, Juice Man. Um, I just want to encourage uh, people watching. If you have some ideas for your hot topics, feel free to email them to Nikki at NikkiClarkInc.com and let's talk about it. All right, we've got a great show lined up for you. So don't go, any go anywhere. We're here at the Nikki Clark Show live. Come back. Thanks a lot. Thank you. The Nikki Clark Show, transforming lives one story at a time. If you would like to be a guest or become a part of our live studio audience or even to become a sponsor, just go to www.nikkiclarknetwork.com. to the Nikki Clark Show, and sitting beside me are the co-founders and organizers of the Heart to Heart Gala coming up February 13th. Please welcome Jessica Lisi and Stefania Tersini to the show. Thank you. Wow, you look great. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having us. Yeah, so uh, how about um, telling everyone how we connected? Okay. Jessica. Um, so I'm in a wedding planner from Your Perfect Day by Jess. And one of my vendors who I absolutely love is Alexandra. Yeah, she's who owns, amazing. Yeah, she owns OMG Events. And she's the one that suggested I contact you to be the MC for the event. Thank you, and it's a pleasure. Thank you. It's we a are, pleasure for that. We love that we're going to be able to have you this year. <laughs> Thank you. So you are a wedding planner yes. by profession. Yes. And then how did you connect with Stefania? Steph and I have known each other for years. <laughs> uh, we were discussing tonight, actually, how we met specifically, but we can't really remember exactly <laughs> when we first met. But it's been since at least high school. And are you a wedding planner as well? Uh, I am an event coordinator. Event coordinator. Um, okay. I have Argos Events and Services. And uh, I started the Heart to Heart Foundation about five years ago. Okay. And this year here for the fifth annual is when I began a small committee of just really close friends and family that have been there throughout the years. And Jessica is one of them. And uh, so it's, it's been a really nice experience. 
Fantastic. Now, why did you start the foundation? Uh, originally, I began the Heart to Heart Foundation as a coping mechanism. Uh, I have my three children that are patients down at Sakit's cardiology. And we, on my husband's side, there is um, sudden death in the youth. Uh, and it's been originating from cardiology issues. Um, electrical heart malfunction specifically is what um, Sakit has unconfirmed but diagnosed. Uh, and therefore, we've had our children checked. And it turns out one of our children does have an arrhythmia. And so, as a parent, is it like a heart murmur? It's uh, it's a regular heartbeat. Okay. Um, the concern is that my daughter's originates in the lower right quadrant of the heart, which is an indication of right ventricular dysplasia, which is one out of the four conditions that um, one of my husband's siblings' death was unruled out on. So, uh, given the circumstances, there is a heightened level of concern, and so I have all three of them monitored on an annual basis. And um, like I said, as a parent, uh, you want to fix it. Like if they get hurt, Absolutely. Boo -boo, you want to fix it. And when you don't have control over it and you can't stop it, you can't fix it, you have to come up with something. Mm -hmm. It's either that or you go stir crazy. And right. so I decided the Heart to Heart Foundation five years ago. And it's just grown into so much more. It's grown into awareness. It's grown into to promote early detection uh, for these variety of cardiology issues that are within young children and it's grown into a support system I've met so many families um, that have attended and continue to and have become close friends of mine that have had their own personal circumstances so um, it's amazing to see how many people come together for the greater good mm -hmm. and it's amazing to see all of the outcomes and how people can move forward and the hospital itself has been I love sick kids it's been absolutely phenomenal. Um, they treat your child as a child. They're not a number. And that in itself is huge in my perspective. Mm -hmm. And to hear all the success stories, how they have saved or helped lives, um, I mean, it's amazing to have that in our backyard. Yeah. So, absolutely. Um, so tell me about the, um, the fundraiser. So that's February 13th. Yes. Saturday, February the 13th. Uh, it's taking place at Presidente Banquet Hall. And it's a dinner and dance a masquerade. Uh, we themed it this year. Oh, it's a masquerade? Yes. Oh, so I can bring a mask. Awesome. Uh, actually, we have them provided. Have them provided. We're providing okay. them for everybody. And uh, it's live entertainment. We have a disc jockey. Uh, we have Evan Flo performing. We have uh, Nicole Borelli. Um, oh, wow. There's so much more. Yeah. There's so much more. I, I can't even off the top of my head. <laughs> but there's so many companies participating. We even have a red carpet entry at six o'clock, and that's provided by Bianconero. And we have a late night sweet and savory section taking place. We also have a silent auction, and it's again, it's all proceeds going to the kids' cardiology department. Fantastic, make some noise for that. That's great. Ellen, um, you approached me with the idea, I said yes. Like before you even finish the sentence, because sick kids is very close to home. Um, I have a brother who's you know a, a thriving, strong, strapping, um, forty-something year old, but he was a sick kid for many years. And uh, if it wasn't for the the hospital, I don't think he would have made it. Um, so you know, uh, anything involved with the sick kids, I'm definitely going to support. Thank it's, you. I'm giving testament to that. Yeah, definitely. So, um, so we've got uh, a great lineup uh, for you know entertainment and uh, great sponsors behind. So, how much are the tickets? So the tickets are hundred dollars per person, okay. and that's your five course meal, your open bar. Like I said, the live entertainment, the disc jockey dancing throughout the night, <laughs> um, and everything else that goes with it. <laughs> so it's hundred dollars per person. Children are fifty dollars each. Okay. Oh, so children can children yes. are more than welcome. It's for the children. Yeah. So I couldn't say no because my three little ones. <laughs> so awesome. I can't wait to meet them. Do you have children? No, I don't. No. Well, okay. I guess does a 32 year old husband count? As a <laughs> yes, they do. Okay. Okay. Yes. <laughs> awesome, awesome. And where can people uh, contact you if they want to donate or maybe volunteer, sponsor? They can buy a absolutely uh, visit our website, and that's uh, www.theheartoheartfoundationgala.com. They can visit us on Facebook at the Heart to Heart Foundation. And uh, alternatively, you can email me at info at the Heart to Heart Foundation, gala.com. I am uh, so looking forward to this. This is going to be great. And um, I'd like you to uh, look into the camera lens and um, someone 
uh, like a mother like yourself or a father who is um, needing some encouragement right now uh, to cope through um, a family crisis, a sick child, what would you say to them? Don't give up. Have faith. Know that in one way or another you are doing something. And whether it's directly or indirectly for your child, um, they will understand it and you will succeed and they should be fine. It's just a matter of having faith and knowing that you're doing your best. Thank you so much. You're amazing. Thank you. Congratulations, and you've got a heart of gold. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, we'll be right back. Thanks. The Nikki Clark Show, transforming lives one story at a time. If you would like to be a guest or become a part of our live studio audience or even to become a sponsor, just go to www.nikkiclarknetwork.com. Tuning in to the Nikki Clark Show live at uh, La Creole 810 St. Clair Avenue West. And sitting beside me is an Ontario Black History Society board member, and he's also a youth advocate, community activist. Please welcome Mahuli Chai to the show. And real, real men do wear pink. I love what you're wearing. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's such an honor to be here with you. Thank you. you. Nikki. Thank you so much. It's so great to be here with you. Good show. Um, thank you. I appreciate it. So tell me a little bit about your background working with youth. So I've been working with youth for approximately 10 years in the city across the spectrum. Troubled youth who have uh, been incarcerated need to be integrated back into society. And so I get the opportunity to allow young people to really understand their full potential and to get to the best part of themselves in order to reintegrate and get a job and to live really a wholesome life. Awesome. Can you tell us one success story? There was a young man that I was working with who got shot eight times. I'm, I'm, I'm very eight pleased times? he changed eight times. Um, and th the great thing about his story was it changed the way I did the work. You know, many of the times you are doing a program, it's 13 weeks or it's for a short amount of time, and you don't get the opportunity to really hear the successes. In his case, shot eight times, I go to the hospital with my team. Not only in one period, but over one a period. period. Shot one time, oh eight goodness. times, he lives. And ironically was in this program, felt that he um, was being changed, and you know, healed really quickly, came back to the program. This is the thing, comes back to the program, cleans his life up, uh, gets, integrated, meets the Prince, Prince Charles, works with Prince Charles for a while here in Toronto, and now doing very well. He's about to be married, about to have a child, is working and is doing oh. very, 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 very well. All through so, your mentorship. That's fantastic. Mentorship. Make some noise for him. Awesome. You're a transformer. I like that. You change people. That's, that's fantastic. Uh, so now, uh, let's, let's talk about uh, your involvement with the Ontario Black History Society. Uh, now, you started off as a host. You, you host a couple of branches for us, and you're fantastic at what you do. And Thank you. You're hosting again this year, uh, but now you're a board member. So what, what's your experience? Here's the deal. I'm so excited to host yet again with Tammy Sutherland, who's yeah, she's a amazing. personality City News. on City News. So exciting to host with her. And the idea to be a part of my community and use my voice to uh, help bring the positive and good news. It's just so really exciting. So on January the 31st, one day before uh, Black History Month here in Canada, uh, we'll be doing this brunch, which is so, so awesome. Because it's the first time for the year that the community gets the opportunity to come together to celebrate each other. And you know, it's been 20, I lied, it's been uh, 38 years for the OBHS in existence, right. and now it's the 20th anniversary. 20th anniversary, that's yeah, huge. For, for black history in this country. So it's such an awesome time to celebrate. Absolutely, and it's gonna be at the Metro Convention Center. The Toronto the Metro Building. Convention Center. We're yeah. excited to be there. It's our second year there, mm -hmm. and we're gonna have a great time. Yeah, in the afternoon, so brunch, Great, great food, great food, great yeah. food, great entertainment, and most importantly, a great history. Mm -hmm. The idea to come out and hear what Canadians have done uh, for this country for so long, and so the great people that are going to be honored there. Uh, I know that Jean Augustine, Dr. Jean Augustine, the Absolutely. Honorable, is going to be our keynote speaker. So it's going to be really good. It's going to be really good. And I heard the Blackburns. 
the that famous black birds. Famous black birds yeah. are going to be performing. They're going to be performing, giving some musical interludes throughout the evening. So we're excited about it. It's a time of fun and of, most importantly, of celebration. Right. And so we're really, really excited about that. Fantastic. And where can people get the tickets? And how much tickets, are they? Tickets can be online. I know it's a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. So. Bring your money out, come and get a good <laughs> plate of food, and, and come and celebrate with the community. Definitely. And the website is? The website is www black. It's what black uh, history society .ca. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, log on, purchase a ticket, come out and celebrate with us. We just want it to be a really good time. It's, you know, just, it just that time when the snow's falling potentially, <laughs> you know, you get a hot, you know, bowl of soup. It's going to be wonderful. It's it will be, will be, it will be. And if you can look into the uh, audience lens and just say, what does black history mean to you? So black history means to me the idea that young people people around the world really learn about the contributions that African Indians have made in society. Well, thank you so much. Thank I'm you. excited about awesome. January 31st. You've all got to be there. And uh, we're going to have a great time. A great time. A great time. Thank great you. Time. We'll be right back. The Nikki Clark Show, transforming lives one story at a time. If you would like to be a guest or become a part of our live studio audience or even to become a sponsor, just go to www.nikkiclarknetwork.com. Show and sitting beside me is the owner of Caesar Transport Incorporated. Please welcome Roger Caesar to the show. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Hey, welcome. It's an honor to have you, and I love that color blue that you're wearing. Very nice. Thank you very, very nice. much. I see my friend there with the pink on. <laughs> yeah, I have to come correct too. You came correct. <laughs> yeah, wonderful colors. So tell me a little bit about uh, your background. Well, I'm Grenadian. My uh, birth and my parents both were teachers, and so uh, education was very big in our family. And uh, when my parents hug a teacher today, I'm a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> so when uh, my parents came up here, uh, my my initial goal was to become an accountant, and, I, and that was what I really wanted to be. And uh, I went to school. I got a degree in marketing and accounting, and then while I was at an internship. It just hit me that this was not what I wanted to be. I'm more of an outgoing person. Mm -hmm. Love to be out there doing things. Right. And uh, that's when I always knew that I had the family business in the, my back pocket. So I went and I joined that with my parents. And the rest is history. The rest is history. OK, so tell me a little bit about your transportation company. How long has it been around now? When did it start? Well, it started now 32 years ago. So my father started in 1984, and he had the dream that, uh, you know, as a young black man at that time, to start a business on his own and to work hard and, and to be successful. And uh, I took over the business about 10 years ago. They've retired and live now in Grenada. And uh, I'm having a great time, loving it. Okay, so what kind of services do you offer? Uh, we primarily work with household items such as uh, house, household appliances and, and as well in the industry business, um, furnace, furnaces and other major things like that. Okay. All right. Um, what, was, what was the biggest challenge you had when you first started into the business? I think the biggest challenge was the fact that I always saw myself, I, I, I love track and field, I ran track for, for most of my life and uh, I, I always envisioned being on that Olympic team and all that stuff. So it was something that it wasn't uh, one of the things that I really thought I would be a part of at first. And uh, it was one of, like I said, it was one of those things that came to me like a shot in the, in the light or however they say it. And, uh, and, um, my dad always instilled in me to always believe that you can be successful in anything that you do. Right. And uh, I've always said that he's the brick house of the family and my mom is the concrete that put it together. So <laughs> I like that. That's how it's a strong it combination. That's right. Mm -hmm. And uh, with them both thinking that way, it made it very easy for me to believe in myself and to jump in. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I wanted to ask you about Toastmasters. Now, this is something that you've been doing for some time, and you recently got an award. 
yes. from them. So yes. let's talk about that. First of all, what is Toastmasters? Well, Toastmasters is an organization that helps you build your uh, communication and leadership skills. Uh, it's been around for many, many years. It started off in the U.S. with Ralph Smedley, and uh, it has gone global. It is all over the world right now, and uh, hundreds of thousands of people are members of Toastmasters. And uh, recently, uh, last year, well, in 2014, I competed in the humorous speech contest uh, for all of Ontario, the, the District 86, and I won. And then in April of 2015, I competed in the International Speech Contest and won that one as well for the district. And that uh, propelled me to the World Championships of Public Speaking in Las Vegas in August. All right, well, congratulations. <laughs> now, what are the requirements for the, uh, the award? How does it lead up to being presented an award? What, what do people look for when you go to Toastmasters? What are some of the criteria? Oh, uh, well, when it comes to your communication, tracks, uh, there are different levels that you go through and what it does is uh, Toastmasters is a great organization that helps you to develop those skills right from the bottom up, teaching you the different types and elements that you need to have to develop a great speech, to become confident when speaking in front of people, mm -hmm. as well it helps you with your leadership skills, uh, learning how to be able to work with people, learning how to work by yourself, mm -hmm. uh, different things like that. When you're doing competitions, it's uh, it takes all those elements that you've learned and you uh, present a speech in front of an audience and the judges look for all those criteria, and hopefully uh, when you perform it they've seen everything they need to see to put you on top. Okay, wonderful. Uh, tell me a little bit about um, running a successful business. I mean, 32 years, uh, that, that takes a lot of blood, sweat, and tears to make it mm -hmm. run so successfully. Uh, what would you say are the three main ingredients to having a successful business? Number one, you have to be driven. It is very important that you believe in yourself and that you are driven at what you do. If you don't have that belief that you can achieve your goals, you've already lost the race. Number two is the belief that those that are around you that can help you, let them help you. Advice is great. Uh, your eyes can see, but if you have others around you, they may be able to see things that you weren't able to see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And third is to always, always, always be humble at your success. Too many times I see uh, people uh, flaunt a lot of their success, and that's fine. But when you're humble and you know that you've worked very hard for it, uh, many blessings come afterwards. I agree. Amen to that. Yeah. All right. And where can people find you if they want more information about uh, Toastmasters, your company? Well, for my company, it's uh, CaesarTransport.com. And you can reach me at rcaesar14 at gmail.com. That's for my public speaking. As well as I want to plug Brampton Toastmasters, where I am the president there. And uh, if you want more information about Toastmasters and coming out to it, please join us there in Brampton. Okay, fantastic. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you very Roger much. Roger Caesar, everyone. Here we go. Nikki Clark Show, transforming lives one story at a time. If you would like to be a guest or become a part of our live studio audience or even to become a sponsor, just go to www.nikkiclarknetwork.com. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it.
appreciate it. So tell me a little bit about, um, you know, the, the premise of uh, Help Fight Ebola. When did that start and why? Well, it started back in uh, April of 2014 uh, because we started hearing news about, um, you know, Ebola spreading in West Africa. So I came from Sierra Leone, and uh, so I'm the Maroons of Africa, as you'll see. And um, I lost my cousin, who was one of the top doctors treating the disease. And um, when I lost Sorry. him, yeah, thank you. When we lost him, he passed away actually in July, but before that, it was really getting bad and there was a lot of delay in helping people. So I decided being a Canadian, rather than complain and you know wait for someone else to do something, go around and create an awareness campaign that will more so educate the public because there was a lot of misconception uh, on how Ebola is transmitted, the people talking about eating bush meat and all kind of negative, um, you know, uh, references to it, so it was something that really bothered me, and I had to act fast. So that's why I started the campaign. So, so Ebola is airborne, an airborne virus. No, um, initially when it started, that was the fear for everyone. Um, but Ebola is not; it's actually transmitted through bodily fluid, and it's only when someone is really extremely sick, and then you become you make um, get in contact with them, and whether it's through the sweat or water that is contaminated or the blood. That's how you transmit the disease. But it's not airborne. It's okay. been proven. And how long does it stay in the system? Um, and is it is the only outcome fatal? Or is there a treatment for it? It was 90%. So now, presently, the cases are stopped. There's no more spread, uh, thank God. Um, all three countries yeah, officially on the 29th of December, Guinea was the last country that had Ebola, so it's no more. Sierra Leone has been Ebola for West Africa. Days. Yes, pretty much the three countries, the three main countries in West Africa, everybody now is uh, free of Ebola. But there's still the issue, yes. Um, there's still the issue of, um, you know, the survivors and the, you know, the after effects for some of the untested vaccines that, uh, that went down there. So we have to deal with the orphans and we also have to deal with those um, survivors now. Okay. Uh, so are, are the survivors contained in, a, in, in an area? No, they're back into the community, they're into so the community. they're okay. fine. You know, there's some sort of treatment, so everybody's fine right now. But okay. there's still side effects with joints and, you know, people going blind and hearing loss. So those are things that we're looking at now. Okay, okay. So what are the fundraising goals you have for the campaign? Presently, we're not doing any fundraising. Um, I decided to stop it because I wanted to take a trip down there personally to assess the whole situation, come back and report to Canadians based on what we found and what the needs will be. Okay. Now, who did you have behind you? You had some great politicians um, behind you. In Canada, we had, um, you know, now she's the Minister of Science, uh, Honorable Christy Duncan, um, the Minister of Health, your neighbor, uh, Eric uh, Hoskins, was very helpful as well. And uh, internationally, we had a group of 400 scientists that were supporting us, York University, U of T, and a lot of other diplomats worldwide. Uh, we even have people from China that were very supportive in the program. Okay, yeah. fantastic. So what, what, um, what do you want to see happen in 2016? You know what? Um, I just hope that we will have a healthy a globe, I think, as a, as a global uh, citizen, if we can all get well and don't wait last minute for anything, that will really help. Because in Canada, we still have our own problems, like mental issue among the youth is really, really a serious issue and that's something now that I'm working with with the National Defense of Canada uh, down in Angus because now I live down in Barrie so I'm working down there with the ministry and trying to help the youth. Fantastic. Are, are there um, any things that we can do to prevent? Um, I mean it, it may not be so close to us here but what, what are some of the things we can do maybe to be um, a little bit proactive in, in assisting in the campaign and, and you know, just in health measures, what are things that we should do to protect ourselves daily? Yeah. The dialogue is important. So in terms of helping ourselves, I think the benefit that came out of Ebola, the way it's spread in West Africa is now it's actually helped people to be more cautious. So people are more aware of their areas of living. Sanitization is really a key. And you know what? I don't know. Um, I think you just have to pray and hope that we don't have anything like this. Because Ebola has been around since 1971. 
you know, it was just it's not a not, recent thing. Like people, no, think. it's not. I mean, if you go back even up to 1927, the first uh, variation of Ebola was discovered in Germany, Maybach. So they call it Maybach fever, but it's the same category as uh, the fever virus, which is in Ebola as well. Yeah. And where can people find you to, to get involved, find out more about the campaign, sponsor, volunteer? For right now, we're just focusing with the Twitter, so it's at Fight Ebola. Um, that's the handle just to get all the updates. But as far as the campaign itself, we should have just put that down. And we invited um, Nelson Mandela's um, grandson, actually. Oh, is coming. What's his name? Ndaba Mandela. So he will be in Canada February 7th. And I would love for you to meet him. Oh, and I'd love I to. think uh, here in Toronto. Yes. So Fantastic. it's his first time visiting, and he's taking on to his dad's legacy. So we're hoping that him being here, we will be able to get some more conversation around African rising, but more so Africa being a global uh, reference rather than just based on race or color. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I applaud everything that you're doing. Thank you so much, Amar Thank Kamara. Everybody, much. let's help fight Ebola together. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We'll be back. The Nikki Clark Show, transforming lives one story at a time. If you would like to be a guest or become a part of our live studio audience or even to become a sponsor, just go to www.nikkiclarknetwork.com. for watching the Nikki Clark show and sitting beside me is real estate salesman Riaz Rolf. Welcome him to the show. Thank you, Nikki. You're welcome. Thank you for inviting me for the second time. Oh, I'm excited to have you. You were fantastic in the summer and uh, I'm just so excited to talk about all the things that you've done in 2015. So let's talk about some of the achievements looking back in 2015. Oh. Nikki, it was an ex extremely exciting year and an awesome year because the market grew so much and I was so happy to have served uh, some of my customers uh, who had, who are already seeing the benefits by the end of this year. Okay. So um, the market in 2015 and the projections for 2016, let's talk about that. Yeah, um, good that you asked me Nikki because uh, I just, the, the figure just came out this morning. Okay. And if you were to look at the figures between 2015 and 2016, the market grew by, the, the prices grew by 9.2%. Wow, that's and, a big jump. And the number of houses sold grew by 10%. That's a big jump. Okay, all right. And, and um, what are the current projects that uh, you're involved in? Uh, I'm involved with a few projects apart from the real estate business in Canada that's, that I'm carrying on. I'm also involved in finalizing a project with another company that's operating in the United Kingdom, the Sri Lanka, and also in the, in the Middle East, trying to get more investors to come in and buy properties in Toronto. Okay, that's very exciting. That's yeah, very, very much because look at whatever is going on in the economy, you've got to turn it into your advantage. Mm -hmm. And at this point in time, because the currency is not performing that well in Canada, it's also cheap for foreigners to buy properties in Sri Lanka, uh, in, in Canada. Okay. It's about 20% cheaper than compared to a year ago. Really? Yeah. Okay. So that helps in a big way. Okay, so so, so who are, are buying now the, um, you said Sri Lanka, you said like England? The, the, which other markets? On, on one side, uh, it's also the Canadians who are having dual nationality okay. in different countries. Mm -hmm. Also, apart from that, there is also investors who are coming in, okay. and also there are people who would also buy, buy and start reselling uh, on possession. Okay, fantastic. And who are the uh, clients that you serve in the east and west? Uh, at this point in time, we serve the east as well as west because we got two offices: one in Scarborough as well as in Mississauga. Okay. So that's the advantage that I have. And uh, the clientele, there's, there's no difference between it, whether it's a new client or is it an existing client. Big or small, we serve them all. Okay, and so you, you talked about um, a great jump in, in the real estate number. So what are the other trends that you see happening in the real estate for 2016? Yeah, in my opinion, one of the biggest trends that I would see in the coming year or the year now we are into, we are already in 2016, um, is that uh, suburban properties gaining in value, like even for example, if you look at Durham, it's like Oshawa, Whitby, uh, beyond, and also even if you look at Burlington and the other places would grow in steep and bounds, 
primarily because there is a new ruling coming up around February, mm -hmm. which means the minimum payment, uh, minimum down payment is going to be more for anything above uh, 500,000 for the incremental amount. Okay. So what happens in this area, there are properties which are being undervalued at the moment, 380, 400,000, those properties would would increase uh, rise in uh, value. Okay. And, and people who are buying, they would ideally want to buy around 375, 350, 380 now, and probably flip it in three years' time, somewhere close to 450, but still short of 500,000, which gives a bigger demand for those properties. Okay. Now, someone who is uh, new in the game of uh, buying property, what are some of the things they should know about buying real estate, if they're uh, fresh? First, first and foremost, I would say, Always consult a real realtor. It's always because when, when, when you have something to do with legally, you always go to a lawyer. And when you have a medical issue, you go to a doctor. Mm -hmm. Just don't try to do it on your own. Okay. Go to a realtor of your choice and also get yourself educated. Get the realtor to educate you. Do not rush. Do not go into a realtor saying, I need to buy another two months. Give him time to educate you, get you up to standards, and get enlighten you and empower you with the knowledge so that you can work with him and right. get, a, get the best deal out. Okay. What are some of the myths or misconceptions of real estate that are out there? Um, there are many fold. Uh, for instance, people would say, okay, if the interest rates rise, would the, would the market come down, market crashes? Or whether is it, is it, is it something, is the bubble is going to be over? Uh, those are the myths that, that are there, but to be honest, everything that goes up has to come down and there is going to be a cycle, but nobody can predict when that cycle is. At this point in time, I say very comfortable for 2016. Okay, wonderful. Now, when I look at you and I and I read your posts on social media, you have a lot of passion. You really enjoy what you do. Absolutely. Uh, what What are some of the things that make you the most happy when you are involved in real estate? Oh, it's it's it's, it's the passion that drives you. You got to get involved. I mean, youngsters, uh, including my children and everybody that I say, you. Got and they're here tonight. Make some noise if you're part of the family. Oh, they're, they're shy. The quiet family. They're waving. <laughs> quiet waves. Yes. You got to follow your dream, and you have, you have to make it succeed. Okay. And when 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 you give your best out, you know it's your life, and it's your idea, and you want to make it a success. Yeah. That comes out. Yeah. You want to make it count. You want to make it count. Absolutely. And where can people find you? Um, on on m my website would be uh, riazrauf.com, which is R-I-Y-A-Z, R-I-U-F.com. And also my phone number is 647-283-1966. And I do answer the call at any time of the day. And it's true. He does. When I call, he answers. First ring. <laughs> Riaz, congratulations on all your success. Thank you. Thank very you much so much. Appreciate it. Looking forward to maybe having you back on the third yeah. time. <laughs> sure. All the best to you and also to the audience. Thank you. Riaz Rofani, everyone. Thank you. We'll be back. <laughs>